today we are going to be tying a bob fly that I simply would not consider leaving out of my fly box for every trip up to the north of Scotland. This fly is called the Kate McLaren Muddler. Extremely effective fly for wild brown trout, sea trout and also salmon. Today we're going to tie it in a size 10. Obviously for, for sea trout and salmon you can put this up to a size 6. So we're going to start off with black thread or black silk. As always, we start off. Now this time I'm going to I'm going to leave this piece of the shank bare. I'm not going to cover this just now. So we are going to go down the shank, nice even turns. For the tail, I'm going to use something a little bit different and this is my personal preference for this fly. This is yellow, it's like crystal hair. Extremely effective for a, a wet fly tail. So we take a small piece of this only has to be about maybe maximum eight strands or so. Here we go. Now I'm going to tie this from that point that I started here. We're just going to catch this in and take it up. Now, the reason I'm taking it all the way is, as I always say, it helps to keep the body uniform. So now we've got our tail. Now we can cut this off. There we go. Next thing I'm going to add will be the rib. For the rib, we've got our fine silver oval tinsel. I just cut off a piece here. And again, we're going to take it up to the point that I stopped and go around. Now these turns, they don't have to be so tight and touching, it's, it's just to hold it down. So the end result is a uniform body up to the point that everything started. So the next thing we have to do is put on our dubbing. Now the dubbing that I like to use on this fly is one I bought here in Vienna. This is called Diamond Dub. Extremely nice, easy to use, synthetic black dubbing. With uh, it's a, a mix of kind of flashy tinsel through it. So the first thing we do before we dub, we take our wax. Remember, make sure it's soft. Make sure it's pliable between your finger and thumb. Again, like I said before, you can heat this up before in a plastic bag with some water, and we just give the thread a little coat of wax. There we go. Now, take a small pinch of the dubbing, and with this stuff, you can actually almost lay it on the th you can almost lay it on the silk and spin it on with your finger and thumb. Taking it round, and again, don't worry about it if it gets a little bit bushy or messy. We want this to look rather rather big in the water. And we just finish that off there to make sure it doesn't come undone. Now we've got this nice bushy, which is a little bit of tinsel that hanging off, straggly body. The next thing we have to do is put on our body hackle. For this we've got a black cock hackle. Now remember, always check the size of it. Should be about one and a half size, one and a half times the distance from the point to the shank. And we just strip off the soft fibres at the top, leaving the stock. Trim off the, the bit that we don't need, and we can just tie this in up here. So that's nice and secure. We do one more turn around the base of the stock. Now we can trim this off. So, hackle pliers at the ready. Take the tip off the hackle. We just push, push the fibres out from the hackle. Get them standing up. 
Uh, and start winding around the fly. Bring these fibers up as we're going around. And now we have arrived at the end of the fly. With your tinsel, trap the hackle at the end, trap it down here, and start to bring it forward. Bring it through the hackle. Now giving it this little wiggle as I'm coming forward, it just, it just helps to stop trapping the fibres as I'm coming forward. The last one here is going to pull these fibres back as I bring it forward. And there we go. So, with our silk, we can now tie this off. There we go. Can I trim off that unwanted little bit of rib? And the tail point of the hackle now, we can also trim off. So that's that all nice and secure. Just bring these little couple of fibres back out of the way. So, we've got our body hackle, we've got our rib, we've got our tail. We're going to add an extra hackle on here. Now, you don't have to do this. Some people do, some people don't. I mean, the, the traditional Kate McLaren had a black body hackle <clears throat> and it had a brown, like a natural brown hen hackle at the head. So we're just going to give it a few tons of this as well. Now, we're going to put this in at the front, tie it in nice and tight, come back and trim that off. Now, with the hackle, again take it at the point, pull these fibres out, and wind this one around once, and before the next wind, pull those fibres back out of the way. There we go. Now, I trap that down. Now let go of the hackle that's trapped. And we're going to wind that back. And just come in and trim off the end of the hackle. So, now this would basically be the traditional Kate McLaren. The, the tail would normally be a golden pheasant crest. Now to finish it, we need to put on a muddler head. Now I've left this space here completely, completely free for the muddler head. So what we'll do first, we'll just put a couple of turns of silk in anticipation for a nice big bushy head. Now we're going to use winter deer hair. Natural deer hair. And this stuff usually gives you a lovely, nice, tight muddler head. So if you cut it at the base, you get a piece that's roughly all the same length. So just take a pinch of here. And again, don't don't make this too many and don't make it too too few. If you do make it too few, you can always go back and do a second head. So really important thing, get this, there's all this fluff if you can see that in here. There's this kind of fluffy stuff that lies between the hair. You must get all this fluff gone. The reason being, the fluff stops the hair from spinning when you tie it. So you can use your finger and thumb for the first bit and just to give it an extra fine comb, I'm going to use a dubbing needle. And I'm just going to push through this. There's a big chunk here came out. And I'm going to pull all this fluff out. You can use a toothbrush, you can use a comb, use a piece of, you can use a needle like I'm doing, but just go through it a few times and try and get it all out. Okay, that looks good. 
Next for this we're going to use a hair stacker. You can use this, you, you don't have to use it. I think, personally I think it gives a better, better finish. So hair stacker. The points that were not cut, the natural points, they go into the stacker. So we just bring these together and drop the whole lot inside. Now we're going to give it a quick tap, 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 tap on something. Again, the coffee table. Now when I pull this forward, as if by magic, the hairs are all lined up. So, so to give this fly the muddler head, we're just going to pick out, there's one little rogue here, here, we're just going to pick it out. I don't want you in there. Give it the muddler head, we're going to try to get your fibres just to stop just before the, the back of the fly here. Because we're going to give it a, a collar. Some people again don't like the collar. I think it gives, a, gives it a much better finish and it fishes much better. So once it's lined up, go round once, loosely, second time loosely, and on the third time, pull down and let the whole thing spin round. And then tighten it up. So now you've got this catastrophe in front of you. Now what are you going to do with this? It's quite easy. Pull the, pull the fibres back of the deer hair, go through it, and work your way to the front of the fly. Now, I'm going to pull these fibres, oh there's one or two here still. So now I've got all these fibres held back, I can go up and I can finish the head. Just a few more loose ones here coming out. It's very messy stuff to work with deer here. So, finish the fly. Can I bring out my old friend, the whip finish tool, the old fashioned one. And then we're just going to pull this hair back. Go around a few times. And then we're going to pull up. And that's the head done. Now, I'm going to snip it off. Now, all this hair that's now standing up, we're going to bring this forward. Pull this all forward and it should leave the collar behind it. So as you can see, we've now got the collar points facing backwards and the toilet brush of deer hair is all facing either upwards or forwards. Now we can start to trim. When you trim, good idea. Scissors and a bin, or in this case a little tub, underneath the fly. Because it's, it's messy enough stuff at the best of times. Now when you start to trim, go up from the angle of the eye. And don't be too quick to take away. So the last thing you want to do is tie a lovely fly. Invest 5 or 10 minutes of your time just to knock it up the head and have to go and do it all again. So coming out at an angle. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to rotate the vise. And again, continue that angle. All these bigger bits out of the way first. Snip your way around. And 
And let me just turn the flame around again. Oh, not going to bend over. And again, let's bring this around. And then just tidy up little bits. If you see little things that you don't like, little like that little bit there, we don't quite want him there. The whole time just pick away and trim it up nice and gently. We're, we're pretty much finished here now. So we're going to swing the vice back around again. Now, we just take a little bit off the front still. You notice also, I've actually got my finger here, I'm steadying the scissors. I'm not just doing it freehand, like Sweeney Todd would have done. I'm actually steadying my fingers up. So I can take away just the right amount. So, head's pretty much finished. There's one more little one down here. The last thing that we have to do is varnish the head. And again, don't worry about this bit. I mean, again, I've got my lovely designer nail varnish that I always use. Just push the brush over the eye up to the silk. Just catch it in there. And again, you can use a needle if you want to be really, really fine and fussy with this. So once that's done, we get a hackle. Again, I've got one here. And we just take the point and stick it up through the eye of the fly. Give it a little twist and a turn. Pull it through. Fly's finished. So, Kate McLaren Muddler, fantastic bob fly. I mean, bob fly extraordinaire, shall we say. Uh, all times of the year, especially towards the end of the year, around about August, September, this fly is just a deadly fly for, for brown trout. Nice, big, bushy, noisy, loud. Trout love it, trout see it, and they always come up for it every single time. So, thank you for watching. I hope it's been a good video for you to watch. And next time we do a video, it will be a wet fly. And it's a variation, just like this one, it's a variation of an absolute classic. And one that was more successful than anybody could ever have imagined this last year. So, thanks a lot. Remember, keep it well safe.